So there was a time in my life when writing music was a lot simpler. It was early 2000s, and I only had one orchestral library to work with, and that was the Ederol Orchestral Soft Synth. It was really small, tiny actually, and lightweight, and uh, you didn't need a beast of a computer to run it, and you know, that's always really good. It also cost me like 900 Australian dollars at a time, which was, you know, a hell of a lot of money at that time. But, uh, you know, it had some really, really great sounds. Um, so much so that some of the, uh, the tracks that I wrote with that library are still available to download in my Creative Commons library. Since then, I've moved on to other libraries, and in fact, I use a lot of libraries uh, these days to produce my music. And over the years, uh, I think the quality of my music has gotten better. Definitely, they sound nicer. Um, but I've also improved the quality of the sample libraries that I use. So it makes a question. Have I gotten better as a composer and a, and a programmer? Or is it simply that I have better libraries to work with? So to answer this question, I wanted to return to my roots. Back to the days of using only one orchestral library to get the job done. But what if this library was 100% free? So I set myself the challenge of writing an orchestral track using only the BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover library from Spitfire Audio. You can actually buy this library for 50 bucks and get it straight away, um, but if you register your email with Spitfire Audio and wait, say, two weeks, two weeks later, they'll send you a download link for free, uh, which means that this library is 100% free as long as you're patient. It has all the basic stuff that you want in an orchestral library, it has all your you know, strings and brass and winds and percussion. Um, it's not super deeply sampled, there's no dynamic layers here, but they're, but they're real samples and they sound pretty good to be honest. So in short, it's a really great beginner library for anyone who's starting with orchestral writing. Um, but the question is, can my skills, are my skills as a composer, you know, good enough to make it sound, you know, good, realistic? How does it compare to my, you know, usual template of orchestral sounds that I would normally use? Let's find out. Oh, by the way, uh, the track that I'm showing today is a track called The Passage of Time, which is a track I've already released as a normal release as part of my library. Uh, and you can listen to it through the link up here. No, up here? Up here, I think. The story behind this is I actually wrote this track originally with the BBC SO and then ported the MIDI data across into my full template um, to make the full library release of this track. The, the process was a little harder than I thought it was going to be, but we'll get to that bit later. So here is my uh, project file, as you can see before you. And if you're interested in uh, sort of looking at this file yourself, I've actually uploaded the project file, uh, the MIDI data, all the stems um, for this track as well, the audio stems for each of the sections, um, as well as the stems for my full release uh, using my full um, orchestral library template as well, the full library release, which you can download from links uh, below in the description. This is a brand new library for me. Uh, so I wanted to uh, create a template first to lay out pretty much all the articulations I'm gonna use, or at least have them available to me so I can you know, just choose them on a whim. Um, you can download the template that I created. Um, I've also put it in the link in the description below. Uh, it is for Cakewalk, um, you know, but you can actually download Cakewalk for free. Cakewalk is a, you know, a door that I've been using for 20 years. Um, but it's actually, you know, it's free these days. So it makes it a, you know, a great option for someone who's looking for a door. And definitely you can, you know, download it to check out the project file if that's all you need it for. So the template has, you know, everything I need um, laid out for me. I've got wind sections with all the, the winds laid out with different articulations. Same for the brass, same for the percussion and the strings. So it's all there, ready, for the, ready to go. And I can just start plugging in MIDI data. And at first, I mean, I really had no idea what I wanted to write. Um, but generally a good place to start with a new library is to just kind of feel your way around it um, and go to some of those sort of common instruments you probably would find yourself using um, when you're writing with you know, writing orchestral music or, or using libraries like this. Um, so my go-tos often tend to be things like uh, French horns and strings um, and we work from there. So one of the things I started off with was the French horns uh, and um, one of the first things that I noticed about this was actually, it was, you know, they're very lovely and warm, you know. So 
So really lovely and broad and warm, um, which makes them really great for that sort of brass corral sort of vibe, that really slow, valiant warmth that you want from a brass section. But it, it never, ever feels like it gets, like it's being pushed, like it's loud, like it's getting to fortissimo levels of playing. And most it kind of gets to maybe like, you know, mezzo forte, which is like, you know, moderately loud. So it's never going to have that really big, epic sort of pushed horn line. So that's the first thing that I could hear is that it's going to be a struggle to make this library sound really epic and pushed, like it's like, you know, playing at their full lung capacity. So that's something that I had to keep in mind. Next I mentioned was the strings, um, is, which is another one of my go-to instruments. And one of the things that I also noticed with this as well is that I immediately miss a legato patch from you know my normal templates um, and that's because the string patches in this library are mostly just uh, basic sustains and I think the big difference that I sort of miss I guess from legato patches um, from more um, fully fledged string libraries is that uh, it's that attack, that initial attack on the note. It's it's slow, so it sort of takes a little bit of time to sort of ramp up into the full force of the note, um, which makes it a little bit harder um, to make you know really nice legato string lines. But that said, if you got the you know if you play around with the doubling in the right places um, and emphasize the right things and use even use woodwind to sort of help um, emphasize these lines, uh, it's not so bad. They, 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 they work. They definitely work. Obviously, also, also doesn't make them ideal for really fast passages. Um, you do have spiccato patch as well, um, which is a sort of a short articulation. That can sort of help in some instances. So we're not completely left out in the cold here. Anyway, in, in any event, both having those, like looking at the brass and the strings is, is sort of giving me ideas that we're not going to be able to do anything that's very fast. So something like slow and you know, soft and broad um, these are all very sort of generic words that I'm throwing around here. But also, you know, just as a challenge for myself, I wanted to try and make a section um, in sort of the, towards the back of the track um, that did try to get to that sort of fortissimo level of, of performance, um, even though that I'm, um, you know, immediately thinking that might not be so easy to do with this library. But it's also something, you know, that we can aim for, something we can try and, and accomplish. So with all this in mind, I, I wrote this track, which you see here. It's like a slow sort of track, a bit more serious. It's kind of fantasy-like, um, using you know, beginning with some harps and celeste, and sort of make this sort of mysterious opening. But then uh, sort of builds with the main theme that sort of falls away in the middle. But then comes back with this much bolder, uh, more fortissimo back end. We'll see how it goes, huh? So we'll play it now. If you don't want to listen to this, or if you've already heard it, feel free to skip using the time codes below. Um, and then we can just, you know, jump to discussing my feelings about it all. Okay, prepare yourselves, because here we go.
So that's it. So, I mean, in the end, it didn't sound awful. It didn't sound too bad at all, to be honest. I mean, there were definitely things that I, I missed from my, my current template. Like I said before, legato for one. But it actually surprised me how quickly I got used to these sounds and sort of falling back into some of the old patterns I used to do actually back with you know, the days of the Edderall Orchestral Soft Synth. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice to just uh, sort of focus on just writing something that was nice rather than, you know, trying to get, like, squeeze um, some you know, amazing performance out of it, knowing that it wasn't always going to be perfect, you know? And it was nice. It felt good. As I said, one thing I did miss is uh, making those strings a lot clearer. Um, I think I struggled with making some of those string lines just nice and precise and, and, and really, yeah, clear in the mix. And as I said before, these sort of sustains, um, they sort of make it difficult to, to really bring a that clarity to the string writing. But that said, like doubling strings in the right kind of way, um, it doesn't sound bad, you know, it works. All my, you know, usual tricks of trying to get the you know, strings to play very emotively, you know, emotionally, um, which is, you know, if anyone's watched my stream, it's actually using lots and lots of envelopes, you know, envelopes on envelopes on envelopes. It works here. It works on these strings, which is really great to know. Um, was able to get what I thought was a you know pretty you know emotional performance out of these strings, even though I'm feeling you know lukewarm about it all because they don't they're not legato. And talking about legato so passionately, it's not the be all and end all, but it is very nice, I have to say. But anyway, all my usual tricks, as I said, they work. They work, which is great. As I predicted, uh, the brass was pretty challenging to get to work in the back end where you want it. I find with these kinds of tracks, um, that's where the brass really shines. Uh, when you've got some a sample that really sounds like it's you know playing loudly and forcefully through these back end sections, um, that add a lot of drama uh, to these kinds of tracks. Um, and when they can't necessarily add the full force of that drama, it it, it feels missing. Um, I have to say, and so it was a struggle to get that to work here. But there was one trick that I tried that did help a bit, and that was actually creating a, a, a second copy of the, both the French horns and the trumpets, uh, and then using EQ to bring up some of the highs and um, high mid frequencies. These sort of frequencies, which would become more prominent when these instruments are played loudly, they have this sort of, you know, sort of ringing, resounding um, sort of tone to them when they get louder. using the EQ to bring these out kind of fakes it a little bit. Definitely for some of those those sort of high moments, particularly in the trumpets, it does help to sort of make and add a little bit more drama, even though um, the actual samples don't really have them in, in the first place. It helps a bit. I actually found another challenging aspect was the percussion, um, particularly timpani. Timpani is one of those instruments that I rely on a lot to help define, you know, bass lines, um, to help define the chord progression of a track. I found that the patch in the Discover is, it's quite, um, it feels like it's hit very hard. And it's, it's sort of, it's funny contrasting to the rest of the library, which I think is doing the opposite, where it's played, you know, sort of soft to medium loud. This is quite a hard hit. really 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 loud um so what i i sort of did particularly for the beginning because i wanted the timpani to be there to help define this sort of the opening it's always good to have that sort of that low sort of rumble i guess something that sort of just kind of adds atmosphere and i wanted the timpani but obviously the timpani at the beginning would be just too gutsy um so what i would was generally doing here was using envelopes to just sort of cut off the beginning of the uh of the note um but then bringing up the envelope to let the sort of release of the of the note play out and it creates this sort of room sort of sound i'll play it for you and that was like a, a way to get around the fact that we've only got one choice for this timpani this really slogged timpani sound 
this is a way to get around it, it's playing around with that attack. We're just taking away the attack um, and it's playing with the release instead. So that was one way to sort of help add that ambience at the beginning by using the timpani. So yeah, something I do love about this library is the winds. They're actually, they're, they're really nice. They're really lovely. Um, very, very playable, very easy to get a performance out of them. I think definitely one of the strong parts of this library. And this is saying something because winds are generally something that I, I kind of ignore most of the time, mostly because I find them hard to um, figure out what they should be playing um, and how to also to blend them nicely with the rest of the orchestra. Sometimes it's, it's a bit of a struggle, um, but these are actually pretty easy to work with. So uh, thumbs up there. I think this library really surprised me. Um, I was able to get a pretty good performance out of it. Um, it sounds really full sounds really deep. Um, I was able to load a lot of detail in there without it really sounding like cluttered and, and messy. Um, so yeah, pretty impressed. I also noticed a lot of uh, like old skills from the days of the Adderall um, were kicking in, you know, works of ways of working around samples to make them sound better. Um, for instance, like the timpani trick. And it kind of validates uh, me a little bit. <laughs> I, feel, I feel relieved to know that, you know, I can adapt I'm not just relying on uh, the sounds themselves to do the work. I'm actually, you know, I am applying some of my skills to make things sound better and my knowledge of, you know, how these things work. And that's good. That makes me feel good about myself. I mean, thank goodness, you know, because I probably wouldn't have made this video if I wanted to just make a fool of myself. Or would I? Because, ladies and gentlemen, the next step of this experiment is to reproduce this track with my full suite of orchestral libraries. Now, these aren't top tier libraries by any means, but they have a lot of uh, modern features, um, you know, such as dynamic layers um, and, you know, legato and velocity sensitivity, things like that. These are things that oh, it just make it so much easier to get a really uh, realistic performance out of them. And this is the result. It's, um, this is using my full template. So we've got uh, a different set of instruments, all sort of arranged in the same way, You've got strings, percussion, brass and winds, but different libraries running them. I'll just play from um, the middle section, um, sort of the reprieve leading up into the back section. If you want to hear the full thing, uh, there's a link below uh, to the full track if you want to uh, listen to the whole thing and compare. Um, but yeah, uh, here it is.
um, you know, so in my opinion, it does sound better. It sounds better, but it's not like a blow your mind better, um, which surprised me. Um, perhaps one of the things, one of the things I sort of struggled with, um, and one of the things that maybe I shouldn't have done, was I, I directly um, imported the MIDI uh, from the BBC SO version into my full template and worked with that. And it did help in some ways. Some instruments, um, it was just pretty much snap the MIDI on and it's done. Um, but also a lot of the other instruments required a lot of editing, and in some instances, like completely rewriting, just because they just sounded just wrong, sounded wrong um, using these new libraries. So it's not always like just an easy um, fix when using um, MIDI from one um, template with another. But that said, the strings, they definitely sound uh, clearer to me, um, just because those legato lines are more crispier when they're you know, playing different notes. Um, the brass sound far more dynamic, particularly in the back end where they're allowed to let rip. Um, they sound a little bit more, m much more regal, I think, and it makes the end um, feel a little bit more grand in a way. But yeah, I mean, overall, I'm really surprised how well the, the BBC SO Discovery library did. Um, yeah, very surprised. A pretty awesome uh, entry-level library for anyone um, who's looking for a, a great library to start with. Um, pretty amazing. Um, also, I would recommend um, Spitfire Audio's um, Labs library which is a sort of a, a library of really uh, cool, unique instruments um, that are all free. Um, and uh, actually kind of the kinds of instruments that are really probably hard to find elsewhere unless you recorded them yourself. And so probably, I mean, I find I'm using them on pretty much everything these days, um, regardless of, you know, what kind of fancy libraries I own. So, I mean, I highly recommend them. Really, really cool stuff. I really recommend Spitfire Audio for and you know, commend them uh, for what they're doing in sort of making really nice uh, sample libraries available for everyone. Well done. Anyway, if you want to see me use my amazing, amazing composing skills live, uh, make sure you jump over to twitch.tv forward slash Scott underscore Buckley uh, and give me a follow. And if you liked this thing, whatever this was, you know, just give me an old thumbs up or something. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.